Police departments across the country are reviewing procedures after video showing the death of George Floyd while in custody. Joining us now, Andy Skoogman, executive director of the Minnesota Chiefs of Police Association, which represents 300 law enforcement officials in that state. Mr. Skoogman, after this terrible incident this week, you put out a statement that your association was, quote, appalled by Derek Chauvin, the police officer's actions, and you applauded the fact that the police chief in Minneapolis fired all four of the officers involved in the incident. Why? Well, Chris, good morning. Thanks for the opportunity. You know, I think there's, when we spoke last week, um, you and I spoke, I, I think there's a national narrative, or there had been last week, that uh, police officers in Minnesota uh, are being trained in the technique that uh, uh, Derek Chauvin used, and that is simply not the case. It is uh, the further, furthest from the truth that uh, that exists. Um, we did uh, condemn the actions of uh, of the officer, not only the technique used by uh, Derek Chauvin, but the lack of empathy shown by the uh, other officers on the scene. Uh, we did commend uh, Chief Madera Arredondo from Minneapolis uh, for his uh, quick actions in terminating those officers. And, and you know, maybe lay, uh, lay folks don't understand, but the, uh, the ability to uh, terminate an officer uh, that quickly is, is unprecedented. It doesn't happen very much. So um, as Attorney General uh, Keith Ellison said in your previous segment, um, Madera Arredondo is a phenomenal police chief and... Um, uh, he did uh, all the right things here. And he, you know, what what those officers did in that video, uh, certainly not aligned with uh, all of the values that uh, the chief of Minneapolis has worked to instill over his tenure. I want to I, I want to pick up, though, because the police report that was filed after the incident said that George Floyd, the man who was killed, resisted arrest, and it also said that he died at the hospital when, in fact, it appears clear he was dead at the scene. Those were both lies, which raises the question, if there had not been a video in this case, isn't it possible, even likely, that these four officers would still be on the street? Well, Chris, you know, I, I really am not privy to the details and the background of this investigation, so it is hard for me to say that. But, um, you know, the videos, I've said this for many years. I've been in this position for six and a half years. I believe that um, cell phone videos, I believe body-worn camera videos are game changers for law enforcement. Um, they weed out the bad apples, um, and, and they can be used to uh, show great things and, and, and that police officers are doing. So video uh, is definitely the key in this case, as it is in so many other cases in this day and age. Uh, you know, everybody now is talking about reform and fixing things, fixing things with the police, fixing things with society. I want to put up something that you said, Mr. Skoogman. Uh, I think law enforcement in general is looking for ways to do a better job of connecting with communities of, <clears throat> of color. You said that back in 2017 on the first anniversary of the shooting of Philando Castile at that traffic stop that we showed in the last segment, yet here we are and it's 2020 and we have another case apparently of police brutality and the death of George Floyd. So. I'm not I'm not uh, trying to uh, put all the blame on you, but how much should people trust these claims? We're going to make things better when we keep hearing it. Yeah, no, it, it, fair question. Um, you know, the attorney general, um, Keith Ellison, in your previous segment, talked just briefly at the end about a working group uh, here in Minnesota that he and Commissioner John Harrington, the Commissioner of Public Safety here in, here in Minnesota, they co-chaired a working group. It was uh, it got together uh, last year. Um, it's a diverse group, including uh, law enforcement stakeholders, community members, uh, family members of individuals who had been shot and killed by 
uh, law enforcement uh, here in Minnesota over the uh, over a number of years. Uh, that working group was actually run by Ron Davis, who ran the cops office under uh, in the uh, President Obama administration. Right. I, I, look, I, I just want to, I need to interrupt because we're we're short on time here. I, sure. I can hear people watching this on TV right now and saying, "Good, we're glad you did the task force." All of that. George Floyd is still dead. Oh, absolutely, Chris. I mean, and 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 the, it's entirely tragic. We we all what we're trying to do is I think we just continue, need to continue to work together. Like we got to get rid of this us versus them mentality. We've got to continue the training that we put together here in Minnesota and across the country around implicit bias. Training isn't everything, but it's certainly uh, a start. We need to do a better job in law enforcement and um, in communities of color about recruiting new officers. I'm extremely concerned right. about the future of law enforcement across the country. We're seeing fewer and fewer people who want to be police officers, whether no matter uh, what race they right. are, um, and that's a huge problem. Um, and I and I do think that. I'll, the final thing that I can say about this is I believe that the arbitration process in our country needs to be changed. We have officers that that uh, violate public policy. Right. They have a pattern of doing that. Police chiefs and sheriffs try to fire them and our courts reinstate their uh, those those jobs. So we, there, it's a whole, we need to look at it from a variety of angles, Chris. Mr. Skoogman, thank you. Thanks for sharing part of your weekend with us.